This little diagram explains how I obsessively track all of my goals. This is one of my goals in Notion, and I like to track every single one of the data points through my nested database. So if I hit another one or another five, I go ahead and update the value in the main page, and I update the data point inside the page. Now, I can also manually reset this by deleting this 585th subscriber over here and going in here and changing the metric from 585 to 584. So if by now you already know how to do this, go ahead and try it yourself. But if you don't, let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, I use nested databases all the time, and so do you. It's going to be any database that lives inside the page of another database. Let's create a random database right here. I'm gonna call it goals because that is the example that I use super frequently. And then we open up a page in here. Say this is reach 100 subscribers. Then if we open this up and somehow granularly track our 100 subscribers using a database inside this page, that is a nested database. So if I just go here, make a inline database, which is what I see tons of people use, and let's just call it granular subscriber tracking. Now, this is a very elementary way of using databases, but it is a nested database. This is the level of simplicity that a nested database lives at. So here I can just say, okay, what date, maybe add in a date property here and say, okay, this is the date that we got this subscriber, say like 99 subscribers on the 27th. So this kind of granular tracking allows you to plot things like charts, allows you to see things in a more granular view than just seeing, oh, I've reached a hundred subscribers. I have a much better video on this that tells you all about how to go from basic to advanced goal tracking using this method, but this video is just for understanding nested databases and nested database relations. We're essentially trying to figure out a way to relate this database to our main page over here. Now I'm gonna go over a quick spiel about nested databases, related databases, and finally relationships between nested databases and their parent pages. Understanding databases is all about understanding how the front end and the back end can interact. Now that is what I would call a traditional database. It's a database that exists separately from its back end and it can be used across your workspace using the linked database command. Now, traditional databases can also have relationships with other databases, like for example here, you can see the different columns where we have home, professional development, and social media, and those are all housed in an areas database right over here. In a traditional database structure, these guys are siblings and they live inside a backend page. That backend page, 99% of the time, is going to be separate from this frontend page. And these are databases, whereas these are linked database views. A lot of beginners to Notion don't really understand that the databases that you're using should be housed in a different place than where you're interacting with them. That way, if I go ahead and delete this page, I don't actually delete my actual databases. I'm just deleting the view that was on this page. Now, I'm not saying go ahead and delete all your views because views do have specific properties that you would like to populate and they have specific things that you calibrate that might not wanna be deleted either. But it is much less severe to delete a view than it is to delete the actual database. A nested database is very different from this. And I would say it's almost the complete opposite of a related database. So this is our parent page called goals or the subscriber goals. And inside here, we have the back end, which holds all of the information and the front end, which holds just the view. And you can even have these both be the same thing in the case of a nested database, because nested databases don't really require separate backends and front ends, especially if they're on the same page. The relationship between a nested database like this and its parent page is much more of a child parent relationship than a sibling relationship like relations are. So. The area database and the goals database have a sibling relationship, whereas the granular goal tracking database for this page right here has very much a child parent relationship with this main page. Any database that is related to another database should exist in a sibling context to that database. That is database design 101. 
And just as a quick example, I'm going to go ahead and try to add a relationship property to the granular goal tracking subs, which is the nested database. And once we add that relationship property, we can quickly see that since this is a parent-child relationship, we'll have to link every single item in the granular goal tracking database to the relationship to our parent page, which is hit 990 subscribers on YouTube. You can also quickly infer from this that every single goal we have on here will lead to another, another relation, which is already bad database design, and every single goal will be related to every single nested database, and 90% of those properties will be empty because it's not relevant. So I definitely wouldn't present such a problem to you without having a pretty good solution, and that solution is going to be adding in a button. Let's go ahead and figure out how we can update these metrics while talking to an inner goal tracking database that adds granularity to this goal. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create that database. So if you recall, if we take a look at our nested database example, we're gonna have the back end right down here, and then we're gonna have some sort of front end to view that information. So here, I'm gonna make this a full page because I like that view better, and we are going to add in that back end. So we're gonna add it by creating a full page database. Now, a full page database is means that the database takes up the entirety of the page. We're gonna call this granular goal tracking. And then I'm gonna add in a name for this, just a best practice that I like to do. So this is the back end, and then I'm also going to create the front end right at the top. So I'm gonna use a linked view of the database for that, and I'm gonna call it, or I'm gonna grab this granular goal tracking database. So I'm actually going to tag this with something so I know that I'm grabbing the right database. I'm just gonna do Q for now. And if I head over here and click link a database, I'm gonna make sure that it is that right database. Here, I'm gonna call this all entries. And this one specifically is for subscribers on YouTube. We can see that our current metric is 344 and our goal metric is 990. So here, I'm gonna to try to just add a simple button that increments this value. So if we create our button, we're gonna call it, um, what do I normally call it? Another, okay, yeah. So another one. And then we are going to do a couple of things. The first thing I wanna do is define a variable because if you can see over here, we have a couple of different buttons and the way we're gonna achieve really easy copy and pasting of those buttons is going to be with a variable. So that way this entire thing functions the exact same way except the variable changes. So that makes it much more reusable. And if you're coming from a programming background, it makes it much more object oriented where you have an object that is this button and you're just changing the argument, which is this variable. So I'm gonna rename this amount to add and I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna use this formula property to add just the number one here. So you can see that it is a number property. This part gets updated and we are going to get into here and update this value up here. So I'm gonna say edit pages, I'm gonna choose this page. Again, that this page functionality is the entire backbone that this concept resides on because if you didn't have access to this page, you wouldn't actually be able to create this fake relationship. And again, as I'm adding this stuff in, we can talk about why it's a fake relationship and not a real relationship. It's because this relationship only works in the positive direction. So. If you're trying to add stuff, you can add it using the relationship, but deleting and syncing anything else that happens in a traditional relationship is not going to be possible with this fake workaround. So here I'm going to get this page and I'm going to get that current metric and we can just see what the value is. Um, well, I guess we can't see values very well in buttons, but if we scroll up, we know that's 344. And what we're going to do is we are going to set this value, the current metric, to the current metric plus one. And instead of, sorry, let me change what I'm doing here. Instead of doing plus one, we're gonna add the amount to add. All right, so now if we close this up and try to run this button, we see that we're getting 345 up here and it does update every single time we press the button. Now, the next thing we wanna do is 
in this button, not only do we want to increment this page, we want to increment this database right over here. So let's go ahead and add that functionality in as well. I'm going to add in a couple of properties first so we can keep track of what's going on. So I'm going to add in a um, number property that says current metric. And then we can also add in a goal metric here. Doesn't really matter too much. And I also want to pull in something specific, which is going to be the goal unit right over here. So it's just going to be a simple text property. I'm going to call it goal unit. And then I'm also going to add in a description that I expect this to be a plural value. So that's always good to know when you're working with other people's databases, which is that if it's plural, you want to use formulas in a different way. And if it's not plural, you want to use them in a different way. So the thing that I want to populate right over here is going to look something like this. So I want it to say subscriber number 348, and um, maybe I want it in a calendar view. So I'm going to add in a date as well. So this is going to be the date that it was added. And then finally, I'm going to add in a better view of this. I'm going to add in a calendar view, and it's going to double check that it's granular goal tracking. I'm going to hide the title, and then I'm going to say dates achieved. That's a pretty good name for this. I'm going to put this as my main view. And then here, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I'm also going to make sure to show, uh, I think I just want to show the name for now. And we're going to use the rest of the properties that we applied here to go ahead and make this look nicer. So the first thing we're going to do is just do the bare bones. So we're going to grab this page.current metric. So we want to make sure that we are getting this value. So I want to add another variable just to make sure very robustly that I'm getting the right thing. So add action below. We define another variable in a different section, right? Here we say updated metric, right? We're going to grab this page dot current metric. And then we are going to add amount to add. So the reason we couldn't query amount to add when it was right here was because that hasn't been defined yet. So you have to define it in separate sections in order to be able to use this variable in this query. So this is going to be our updated metric. And then down here, we're just going to set this value to the updated metric. All right, so the updated metric is going to be 349 for this example. And then here, we're going to say the current metric. Again, we want to make it the updated metric. We're going to save that goal metric. That's a, per, that's a static value, so we are going to grab it from this page, goal metric. And then finally, we're also going to set the goal unit. So the goal unit is going to be this page dot goal unit. And again, remember that we expect this to be plural. So if we're going to do anything else with that, we're going to make it plural when we, or we're going to strip that S off when we use it. Finally, the date, we can just set it to today's date and complete that. So if we add another one right here, we can see that both of these updated at the same time. We have 349 at the very top, and we have 349 down here. And we can also see in dates achieved, if I make this a better, easier to see view, you can see that a new page has been added. Now this doesn't tell us too much, and I don't like cluttered calendar views. I don't like cluttered calendar views. So I don't want to add in all these values here. So if I add in 349 here, I think it looks okay, but I want it to have I want it to have a better label. So the final thing that we are going to do is we are going to add in a formula to figure out what this value should be and make that name nice and concise. So I think something simple like blah 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 should be perfect for us in this scenario. So let's go ahead and add that in. So we're going to say, so the word subscriber, we're going to get it from this goal unit. So we're going to say this page dot goal unit, goal unit. We expect this to be plural. So I'm going to strip this. I'm going to say substring and I'm going to grab everything. I think that's, that works. I think it works. Last time I checked it worked. So it should work unless I'm wrong and it doesn't work. But Okay, so we're going to grab this, we're going to add a empty string, and then we're going to say subscriber number, and then we're going to do the updated metric, and let's add an exclamation point. Okay, perfect. So now, done. Let's see if that works. So I'm going to say another one, 
Okay, so this is very incorrect. Um, that is not what we want. So I think, oh, I think it's zero to negative one. I think that's what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so here, let's try again. All of this is about trial and error. So zero to negative one here, done. Let's try again. Okay, subscriber 351. I wanted a number sign there, so let's put that in. Plus number sign. And I don't know if you need to escape it, but I'm gonna do it without escape for now. Okay, subscriber number 352, pretty good. And then let's do that title case thing as a final touch. So if we scroll all the way down here, and we grab this, and we say substring, um, okay, so this one we're gonna say one to negative one, and then here we're gonna say this page dot goal unit, and we're just gonna say zero plus zero to one. Okay, and then we're gonna title case this. Not title, up. Okay, perfect. So subscriber number 353, pretty nice, pretty concise, and we can delete these old ones that didn't work, or I can leave them there as a good example of how it works. So that is how you do it. So anything that you wanna add, um, things like this, if you want to relate the inner page or inner database, the nested database to your parent page somehow without using relations. And I just told you why you shouldn't use relations for this specific use case. You can do it like this. And then as a final touch, I'll show you how to make it so that if you start getting 50 subscribers every day, you don't have to be adding them one by one. So we're gonna say another one. We're gonna change this to another 50. I'm not there yet, but hopefully you progress faster than I do. When we're, all we need to do is update this value to 50. And then we go ahead and close it up and we say another 50. We quickly jump from 355 to 405. So that way we can keep a pretty good tab on how, we're, how often we're increasing subscribers and you don't have to manually do it if you're getting a larger number of subscribers. And the one big thing that I really like about this is it tells me what kind of progress I have on my goal and it tells me I've calculated a couple of other things in my personal one where I have the expected progress. So like if I'm at 965 hours and I should be at 945, that makes me feel good because I'm like, haha, like I beat, I beat my own goal. And then it also tells me the projection. So if you continue at this rate of change, you can reach 4,084. All of this stuff can be calculated using regular relations without the nested database, but I also like adding them in individually and keeping track of it. At some point, I'm gonna stop doing this, but for other goals that I have, like for example, posting templates or specifically my 30 days of recreating, I really like having this nested database. You can see my terrible, terrible drawings here, but I really like having this nested database to see when I'm actually creating stuff and how or what kind of progression I have and it gives me a nice little scrapbook that I'm dealing with. So a lot of different use cases for this nested database and now you know how to actually create a real relationship with your parent page. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm Jimmy and this is Magazine Rolls Notion.